Hello folks, today we're going to learn on a 3D Studio Max tutorial how to make fire. Very important to know, I've needed fire for many scenes. It took me years to figure out this formula. Um, what you're going to do is go ahead and right off the bat pick you um, out of particles a super spray. Go ahead and apply that. Make it about yay high. Man, we'll go the whole grid. Alright, now that you got that, now you want to go ahead and set your uh, particle system up. What we're going to do is give us right off the bat a uh, spread of 15. I want to make this mesh in the viewport display so I can see what it's doing at all times. I want this to be 100%. On the percentage of particles I see in my viewport, that way I knew what all is going on. We're going to make the speed 0 0.2. We're going to use a total of 200 uh, particles. Make sure you change it to use total and pick 200. We're going to start this emitter at negative 100. The reason we do that is because already in the scene you will see exactly what you got going on we're gonna make this stop at 500 display until 500 we're gonna leave the size the same the variation the same grow for 10 we're gonna make this fade for 30 now I might be going ahead and giving you the digits and stuff it's not like you're really learning anything there but you are seeing the basis of how it starts and once you mess with, with the uh, um, settings and start to tweak it yourself you'll, you'll get an idea of how it works and how to do many other things alright we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna pick a particle type we're gonna pick um, facing we want it to be facing us what happens is the particles come out It's really small. Let's go ahead and zoom in. See how the particles are coming out? They're actually facing little uh, squares. Um, when I add a material to this, no matter where we turn, we're going to see this. It's facing. It means it always faces you, no matter where you're looking. So now we're going to go ahead and add a material, well, before we add the material, we get a rotation and collision. You want to drop the spin time down to 1, variation to 0.5, makes it a little bit different on each spin. A phase of 180, variation of 1. This makes uh, one point difference in the way the variation of the spins are on the phase of 180 degrees. So let's see, we've got that so far. So there we've got a fireish look, but the boxes you can't really tell. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Material Editor, Compact Material Editor, if you got that version of Max that asks that. Let's go ahead and apply this. Go ahead and show standard map and viewport. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick our colors. Go down here to noise. So you pick your noise for colors. We're getting a little bit of orangish. We'll do the yellow first. So there's a little bit of yellow. Now we'll go ahead and add the orangish red. You never really see red in your flames. So this is the way to do it more of an orange color. So there we go, we got that. Make it fractal. We'll change this later, depending on how we need to tweak it for our scene. Okay, now we go to opacity. Let's go ahead and pick uh, a gradient. reason we'll pick this is because when we pick radial, and go back, well, I should have did this before, go back and pick face map. See, on each face of these squares gives it a radial look to 
where it dies off towards the outside. Because if you look at the opacity, right here is black, gray, white. Dies off here. This is about medium. This is the brightest point of it. That's the way the texture works. We're going to go ahead and drop this down to a black. We only want to see the white because we're going to add some noise to it. Give it about a 7. This is, this is where we're going to see our uh, flame look. Give it a uh, 0.7. My bad. As far as the size goes, go to what feels right for the look of your uh, flames you want. make the threshold a 0.5, make the high a 0.5 on the, on the low and the high. The reason we're doing this is because the blending between the two colors will be, um, they actually won't be blending much. It puts off more of a sharper look to them. Let's see, let's see, four or three is probably about good on these. I'll try three for right now. So that's that. So now we got our opacity or color. Let's go back over here to the parameters of the super spray. We're going to look at the size. Let's change it. Put it up to about three. I need to get rid of this glossiness. Don't need that. Fire's not glossy. down here and adjust this a little more. It's too strong. It's about four. Uh, three looks about right. So now here you are and you've got a, um, a fire effect going. Not too bad. Looks pretty good. Go up the size to three or four. There's five. That looks a little better. Maybe four. Yeah, we'll leave it at four. Now what you want to do is you want to go to your video post. What we're going to do is right here we've got our perspective view. We're going to add a scene event, which means we're going to grab our perspective view, throw it up into the video post. Um, scene in five. No, we need this to end at 500. So we're going to change our scene down here at the uh, time configuration to 500. Now when I do this, everything's at 500. This gives you a good long video to work with. Uh, the particles will constantly uh, emit from uh, the emitter and always put off the look of a fire as long as you want to keep the frames going. Just always got to make sure you change the times. Alright, so here we go. We got everything alright on what's coming in on the perspective. Now what we want to go ahead and do is add a filter event. We're going to pick lens effect glow. This is how we're going to get our fire's brightness. Now, after it filters, we want it to dump out to a file. This is going to be our AVI. Let's see. We want this to be Microsoft Video 1. There we go. Okay. So we got it coming in from perspective, getting a glow effect, and then going out to your output for your video. Whatever you want to use for your codec is what you use, but this is the order it goes in. Uh, go ahead and go to Lens Effect. Well, before you go to Lens Effect Glow, click on your fire. want to pick properties you want to put this at a G buffer object ID of say 2 the reason we're going to pick 2 is because when we go up here go to setup 
we put the effects ID or no the object ID to 2 hit preview VPQ look there's our fire it's glowing use pixel because what pixel does is gives you the colors that come off of originally what you um, um, flame flame texture is putting off uh, the reds and oranges like you picked and that's exactly what's coming off here and if you pick pixel it's going to give it a glow coming off of those pixels pixels the same colors pretty much I'm going to drop the intensity down say about intensity of one and maybe two I'm going to drop the size down say probably two yeah, two hit OK Go ahead and go up here and you're going to test your scene out. You're wondering how your uh, fire is going to animate. HD TV video. Pick 1280 by 720 or whatever you want. This is what I prefer if you're wanting to make something uh, you want to show others. It works with a lot of, um, like for instance, YouTube. If you want it to be on YouTube, this will be a a high definition video because it's strongly supported um, but other than that I'm not going to go in depth on that go ahead and render see how it's giving off the glow effect to it so it's going to sit here and am animate this what we're going to do is hit cancel I'm going to go ahead and show you a video still of it so you can see what it looks like There you've got fire. So now you've pretty much created fire. That pretty much is it for uh, my tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned how to uh, make fire out of this.